Hi, I'm Tom Nelson. If you're an alt process printer, chances are good that your most expensive chemical is the toner. If you're using any of these processes, stick around for a survey of toning types and an idea for saving money on toning. Toning replaces the silver and iron compounds in the print with a metal that won't oxidize. It makes the print archivally permanent and also changes the color of the print to something you may prefer. The most common metallic toners are platinum, palladium, gold, and sometimes selenium. Except for selenium, these are pretty expensive to buy, but you only use a little at a time. Here are Bostic and Sullivan's prices at the time of this video for the smallest amount you can buy. Platinum is almost 115 US dollars for only 10 milliliters of toner. Compared to the next one, it's four to five times more expensive per print, and I won't be testing it. Palladium is the toner I use. It's almost as expensive at $94 for 10 milliliters. It's costly, but as you'll see, it's not too costly per print. Gold is next. Bostick & Sullivan sells a two-part kit for $80. For that price, you get two 500 milliliter bottles. You combine them to get a working toner. You get a bigger bottle, but you need more per print. Selenium is very cheap. B&S doesn't sell it, but you can get a 32 ounce bottle for under $20. I'm going to make five identical calotype prints, toning each one a different way. I'll quickly go through the process with the first one. In sodium citrate developer, it turns reddish brown and looks a little too dark. In a clearing bath of 3% citric acid, the print lightens significantly and turns yellowish. There's a one minute wash next that I'm not showing you. Toning comes next. The advice for calotypes is to tone before fixing to avoid bleaching the image. And here's where I might be able to save you some money. The traditional method is to mix a liter of working solution at a standard dilution, then use a little for each print. But the amount of palladium you need varies. A high key image needs very little palladium, a low key image a lot. Dana Sullivan at Bostick & Sullivan gave me this tip for palladium. Mix a bottle of half percent citric acid, Pour out 100 milliliters, just enough to cover the print, then add a few drops of palladium. For a normal print, I recommend two or three drops, which will cost you about a dollar. This is for a 9 by 12 print, remember. The toner changes the brown color to a more neutral brownish gray. The brighter values change almost immediately. After five minutes, most of the middle tones have changed. At 10 minutes, you should see a color change in all but the darkest tones. If not, pour the toner out and add another drop or maybe two. Pour the toner back in and give another five minutes. Don't just drop the toner onto the print, which will cause a stain. At the end, you want all but the very darkest tones to change. Let's complete the processing. After another water rinse, I fix for two minutes, during which the blacks deepen and the darkest tones neutralize. There's a 20 minute wash at the end. The whites are burned out, but they dry down as the print dries. The final print has a pleasing neutral brown tone. With gold, most of the color change happens as the print dries. Here's an identical print that's ready to tone. Bostick & Sullivan recommends using five milliliters each of ammonium thiocyanate and gold chloride in 100 milliliters of distilled water. This is about 80 cents for a nine by 12 print. At the end of toning, there's still a lot of yellow in the mids and shadows. It neutralizes quite a bit in the fixer, but watch what happens as the print dries. The final print is very neutral in color with a nice dark black. Selenium is somewhat controversial. Some people caution that it tends to bleach the highlights. It's very cheap, however. The recommended dilution is 20 drops or one milliliter in 100 milliliters of water. That's two cents a print. Alt process guru Sandy King recommends fixing before toning to avoid staining the print, and that's what I did. Here's the print ready to fix. The blacks deepen with fixing, but it keeps its yellow color. The color reddens and neutralizes somewhat during a 10 minute toning process. When it dries, however, the mids and low values weaken. It looks washed out. I've seen some nice prints toned in selenium, so there must be something wrong with my technique. Let's try toning before fixing. This seems to go well at first. As it tones, it gives a darker, more satisfying black. It looks good after washing, but watch. As it dries, the print stains terribly. This is what the back of the print looks like. Yuck. Finally, here's a print with no toning. Sandy King and others say that without toning, residual silver in the calotype will oxidize and it'll fade over time. 
Other workers claim that their prints have lasted, even in sunlight, for years without noticeable fading. Personally, I don't take chances on fading. Here's the print as it develops, clears in citric, fixes, and washes. The print neutralizes quite a bit as it dries. It has a nice brown tone and a good black. It's too dark, but a change to the negative would fix that. So there you have it. Used properly, none of these toners is very costly on a per print basis. With one exception, I can make an acceptable print from each. Okay, now I'm going to get all calibrationist on you. Here's a scan of the step wedges on all five prints. I added a strip of unprinted paper, a neutral card, and a patch of black velvet. I'm going to adjust the brightness of the scan so the velvet is zero and the paper is 100%. This will let me answer several questions. What color does each toner create and how saturated is it? Which one gives the darkest black and which has the brightest white? And is there any significant staining of the uncoated part of each print? To make this easier to visualize, I read the colors with Photoshop and made this image. I also read the uncoated borders. I put a strip of pure white next to the white patches for comparison. Here's what I found. Gold toning gives the darkest and most neutral black of the five. Leaving out that horrible selenium print, all have white values that are just a step down from paper white, and there's not much difference among them. Again, leaving out that one, all prints lost a little brightness in the uncoated borders. This would represent a slight staining of the paper, but I don't consider it significant. It's hard to see, but all but one have greenish blacks, which become yellowish or reddish by mid-tone. Mid-tone brightness varies quite a bit, but I could control it with my curves. So there you have it. Except for palladium, all of these prints had a big change as they dried. Palladium toning is the only exception. Only the brightest values dried down. It's more expensive, but it lets you see the toning as it happens. Platinum toning would presumably be the same, but it's four to five times as costly per print. Choose gold toning if you want the greatest brightness range with the deepest blacks, but the toning only shows up when the print dries. Its mid-tones go reddish rather than brownish. Selenium toning is finicky from my test. It's very cheap though and it's worth more testing. Just don't tone it before you fix it. Printing without toning gives an attractive warm tone, but your prints may fade. It darkens a lot and has a huge color change as it dries. Okay, that's what I've learned so far. I hope this helps you.